Welcome to this Seriously Pro quick tip. We're going to talk about how you connect different types of receiver to this Seriously Pro flight controller using Clean Flight. We're going to use an orange receiver and connect it and go through how we've done it here, which is connecting it up for PWM, where each of the individual signals comes down one of the wires into the board. We'll talk about how we get CPPM or PPM out of this same receiver. So with just one wire, we can have all of that complexity simplified. And then finally, with a Tronus radio, and we'll set up SBUS. Now, for those of you that have come to this video as part of a series, you've already seen SBUS configured in the first video of that series. So what I'll do is I'll use SBUS as the last one. We'll do PWM first. So PWM is probably the most complicated because we've got to figure out how all these wires go. You'll notice here that we're having to use cables from each of the I.O. connectors on either side of the Seriously Pro flight controller to make this work. So I had to sit and kind of figure this out, but I've tried to make it as simple as I can for you and put it in a diagram. So the way we're going to have to connect it is from I01, which is on the left hand side of the board if we're looking at it with the USB cable at the top. And I01, we're going to have to plug in the cable that comes uh, from pin 3 into the aileron connector, the cable that comes from pin 4 into the elevator connector, and the cable that comes from pin 5 and 6 into the auxiliary 1 and auxiliary 2 ports if we have them on our flight controller. On the other side in IO2, then we need to plug in the cable that comes out of pin 3 into the throttle, pin 4 into the rudder, and then pins 5 and 6 into auxiliaries 3 and 4. So the pin mapping is exactly the same as the other boards using clean flight, but the way it works on a Seriously Pro is a little bit unusual in that it actually jumps from one side to the other. Now this is covered in the manual, but hopefully this is a slightly cleaner way for you to understand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug this in live on screen so you can see exactly what you've got to do to make this work. So here we have our board as per the diagram that we've just looked at. So this is IO1 and this is IO2. So on IO1, the first thing we need to do is to find uh, pin 3. Now the way I have it connected here is that pin 3 is actually marked on the board quite clearly. It's printed on. If it um, focuses, there we go. You can see it's it's marked as pin one and also as pin eight. So you can see which is which. Now pin three is obviously going to be the third cable down, which for me is a white cable. Uh, won't necessarily be the same color, but um, you just need to pick the third one. And as we can see on the diagram, that this one needs to go into the aileron connection on your receiver. So on my receiver it has aileron plugged in. We need to make sure that we're plugging it into the signal wire which is at the top for me. So I need to plug that into the aileron connector. Okay, the next pin which is pin 4 on IO1 which for me is this blue cable that is going to be my elevator. So again I need to find my elevator on the receiver and plug it in. That's better, that pin was slightly loose. The next one then we need is on IO1 is pin 5, which is auxiliary 1. Now the next one for me, pin 5, is this pretty yellow cable. That's the blue one. There we go. So that is my next one, that's pin 5. And this needs to go into auxiliary 1. Now we just need to pop that in the top. Okay, so that's one side done for me. The next side then, we need to then connect these up. You'll notice however that for um, on the left hand side, pin 1 is at the top, pin 8 is at the bottom. On the right hand side, pin 1 is at the bottom, pin 8 is at the top. Just be aware of that. Now in this case, I've actually got um, the 3 pin cable which is going to supply power to the receiver plugged in this way. It doesn't matter, either way would work. Um, so the first cable on or pin 3 on IO2 is going to be my throttle. So this needs to plug into the throttle receiver. There we go. And that will also supply the power because it's also got the other two connections too. The next pin by throttle on um, IO2 is going to be my rudder. So that again is the blue cable for me. That needs to plug into the rudder. And then 
The last one is Auxiliary 3. I don't need Auxiliary 3 because I just need the five channels, four to fly with and one for the modes. Okay, so now we have it set up and configured. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in power into the battery bind port and I'm going to power everything up using a battery and then we're going to plug it back into clean flight and we'll have a look at what that looks like there is one little thing that i found setting up the pwm receiver there was a gotcha and i want to cover that in case you get caught out so to actually set this board up for pwm we need to go into configuration we need to go into the receiver settings and in receiver mode here in configuration tab we just need to make sure that rx parallel pwm is selected and make sure that we click save and reboot then if we go into the receiver tab we should see the throttles moving the rudders moving the elevator is moving and so is the aileron now one of the gotchas that i had when i tried this the very first time was that my throttle and um, rudder seemed to work fine but I was getting absolutely no response from my elevator or my roll controls and that um, didn't seem to make sense I even went and plugged a servo into those two outputs on the receiver to make sure that there wasn't a problem with the receiver itself and the servo moved fine so I knew it was something in here the way I got over that and got it to work I just went into the ports and uh, unclicked MSP and forced a reboot. Now when it reboots and it comes back, it'll come back and reboot and MSP will be reticked. but what I found was for me, that was enough to actually fix the problem and give me all four of my main flight controls and also give me my auxiliaries as well. So just a warning for you, if you find that two of the controls don't seem to work, um, for me, I fixed it by just going into here clicking, uh, unclicking MSP, clicking save and reboot and it worked. Do you need to make sure that you have the default channel map set here because the default channel map is the one that matches how we've actually plugged it in. So the, um, the connections that it's making via the PWM connections all match up with this because if we change this um, you'll actually find that um, there's a slightly different connection between the remote control between the control stick on your radio and what it actually appears as here. So you just need to double check that that's all working. So that's our friend PWM. That's probably the most complicated one to set up. The next one we'll set up then is using PPM. We'll use the same receiver, but this time we'll use one single connection into the receiver to send all of the information across. So let's do that now. So I would always recommend that if you're going to set up one of these SP3 flight boards that you actually connect to it using either PPM or SBUS and we'll do PPM next. Now you'll notice that the two cables that come that connect to either side of the board that we've just used to connect everything up using PWM, these cables are slightly different. There's one where the first three wires, the red, black and white, actually finish in three separate connectors that's one of the cables and the other cable is slightly different in that the first three wires red black and white finish in a single servo connector this is the cable that we need to have in our hand if we're going to use sbus or cppm so for ppm we actually are going to plug it into io1 for SBUS, we'll see in a second, we plug it over here. So let's just plug it into this side first of all. Make sure we get it the right way around. So that the red, black and white wires are going into pins 1, 2 and 3. And then all we have to do is then plug that cable into whatever the PPM output is on our receiver. And that's it. So all of those um, cables are not needed right now for the receiver. We could potentially use them for other things later on in the series. We have one single cable going from our receiver into this side of the board. So we'll power everything up again. We'll plug in a battery into one of the spare channels on the receiver. Double check your polarity before plugging everything in and then we'll plug the battery in. Here we go. Now, we'll jump back on the netbook and we'll configure this for PPM. 
So we'll plug the board back in. So the uh, it's powered just as we've seen it. I'm just plugging the USB cable into it now. And there we have our connection. Now this time if we jump into receiver mode, we'll actually see that on the very first channel it's jumping around and that's actually because it's still set up for PWM mode so as those values come across on that single cable that's what we can see in the display so we need to change that slightly so we're going to go back into configuration and then the other thing we need to change is say it's a PPM input and then click save and reboot and when it comes back which is fine when we go into the receiver, there is all our values again. Now this time, that's my throttle, that's your, that is pitch, and that is roll. So that is all working the right way. Make sure that the sliders on the display match the direction of your sticks. So as you push the elevator up, the value goes up, and vice versa. As you increase the throttle, the value goes up, and then it goes down and um, all the other channels as well. The other thing that we need to notice in here is the channel map. You also need to make sure that the channel map is the right one. Now at the moment we actually have it set for the defaults. If I change it and save it then now my throttle is running pitch. So just make sure if you come in and find that the controls for PPM are actually working the wrong inputs here on the display. So for example, that's my throttle. My elevator is now connected to my roll input. It's the channel map that you just need to change. If I change it back to default and click save, then there's my throttle, there's my rudder, there's my elevator. And there is my aileron or roll. So that I know that's all working. What I would do at this point with all the radios is it's worthwhile taking a little bit of time just using the trim adjustment to get the middle position of the roll pitch in your down to as close to 1500 as you possibly can. So there we go. Now we've done P. PM. So we've done PWM and PPM. The last one is going to be SBUS. The connections for SBUS is very similar to PPM, with one very notable exception. We're going to use exactly the same cable that we've just used to demo PPM working. This time we're going to plug it into the other side. So this time it's going to go in here, which is the IO2 connector, also called UART3 in the software. And all we're going to do is plug that single servo cable into whatever the SBUS output is on the receiver that we're using. So it's that straightforward. Again, we'll power it using a battery. So I'll just plug this in. Again, be very careful with polarity with this. Once it's powered up, there we have the receiver and the board ready. Let's go back onto Clean Flight and just show you the two or three things that you actually need to do to get this working. So back on the netbook now, we're not actually connected to the board this time, so I'm just going to plug the USB cable into that board that we've just powered using the LiPo battery. So here I'm plugging it in now. We'll connect to the board. And there are actually three things that we need to do in order to get SBUS working. The first is we need to go into ports and select UART3 to be a serial receiver port. So we need to make sure that that box is ticked and then click on save and reboot. The board will then reboot and the next step is we go into configuration. We go all the way down to the receiver mode and there are two things we need to do in here. One, we need to select receiver serial. That's will tell the board that we want to use Spectrum Satellite Receiver, SBUS, SUMD, whatever. The thing you have to remember, as well as selecting that, you also have to pick the serial receiver provider in here. If it's Spectrum, you're going to have the top, SUMD is underneath it. We obviously want to highlight SBUS. Make sure that you've got RX Serial and SBUS connected. Then click Save and Reboot again. And then when you go into the Receiver tab, there are all the channels. If I move my throttle, if I move my rudder, my elevator, and my aileron.
So they're all working. So there are a couple of things that we need to consider no matter what kind of receiver we have connected to the board and it's worthwhile us going through those at the end of this video just to remind ourselves of that best practice. The first thing is that no matter what radio we're using we should always try and make sure that the roll pitch your channels their middle default values when the radio is in its center position is as close to 1500 as possible so use the sub trims the adjustments in your radio to get them as close as we can these are reasonable for me i might have a little bit more of a play to try and get pitch and roll as close as we can to 1500 having it different from 1500 will be read by the flight controller as you wanting to gently go in a particular direction so time spent here will help you with drift. The second thing we need to talk about is the range of the main flight controls. Now you'll notice here if I go right across on my roll it goes up to 2011 and it goes down to 987. You really want those numbers to only go as far as just below 2000 and just above 1000 for both the roll, pitch and yaw. Throttle is useful to have in that same range as well because it helps with things like fail safe. So I find, particularly with things like the Tyrannus radio, the Tyrannus radio always overdrives the channels a little bit and I would spend time here just making sure that none of them go over 2000 and none of them go below 1000. So I'm going to set my ranges up to a B about... Um, 1980 down to about 1020 that will give me a nice full range and will also mean that I can do things like setting up fail safe fail safe is the last thing I'll talk about here so right now my receiver is connected so if I we pretend I'm flying along so my throttles you know reasonably high I'm, I'm hooting along tilted over watch what happens when I turn my radio off the throttle drops you need to make sure that you have your fail safe set up on your receiver so in the unlikely event of you having a problem with your radio connection then that's what happens. If I turn my radio back on and it reconnects, get over that warning, there we go, we're back in business. There will be a video that's going to cover failsafe in a little bit more detail, but I absolutely recommend that for now, make sure your failsafe is set up because some receivers, when you turn the radio off, will not drop that throttle value and your craft will fly away under its own steam, never to be seen again. So we've covered quite a bit, although this is a quick tip, it's one of the longer quick tips, but hopefully you'll only need to watch the bits that are relevant for the receiver that you want to connect. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.